Hi, I'm Paco Nathan from O'Reilly Media, and today it's a pleasure to get to talk with Charles Smith. You're a big data architect, uh, manager of big data architecture at Netflix. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Charles. Um, so tell me a bit more about the, the Netflix data platform and how does this uh, involve notebooks and Jupyter? Well, um, for a long time, we've been um, driven by data. Um, Netflix, you know, it is our competitive advantage, understanding what people are doing with our site, mm -hmm. with our media, or things like that. The canonical example, the Netflix prize. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, you know, really over the last few years, um, we've really been thinking about, like, how can we use data more efficiently, right? Um, how can we make our data scientists um, job easier um, and share and collaborate, um, you know, a lot like um, other companies are doing. And so... Um, notebooks are just a place, and where we started was just, you know, how do we interact with our data? How do we visualize right. it and really get it, um, take advantage of that? More recently, um, we've been thinking about notebooks as a protocol, as, um, as um, a JSON con construct, as um, the Jupyter protocols themselves. And so we've been thinking about building and extending platform, our platform, so that um, this idea of notebook is not just this UI that you're exploring data, but um, just a piece of tooling that we can build a single data platform across. Um, and that's what we've been doing over the last few years. Oh, fantastic. I mean, it, it, it does come across as kind of an unusual sense of the notebooks, but it, it, it actually speaks to, I think, a lot of the disconnects that I've heard. Like, people say, well, how do you operationalize it? But yeah. if it's a protocol, it's already operationalized. Yeah, how do I schedule a notebook was, you know, is really how, like, people normally say that to us. You know, um, they do think operational, they do think testing, yeah. but really they just want, you know, I have this work, I've been, you know, um, interacting with it, and now I want to run this repeatedly. Right. And um, we looked at that problem and we thought, you know, it's not just um, the, the nature of your scheduling, but it's really we want to run code that you understand um, to take tech that you can touch and um, make that part of your normal workflow. Um, when you come back and, and, and need to touch that later, um, it's really great that we've invested all this in UI. It's, it's familiar. Um, and, that, and that smooths a lot of the you know, self-service. We would call it self-service. It makes it a lot easier for a user to you know, make sure that they understand what's going on. There's nothing hidden under, underneath. It's a notebook. It looks like a notebook. It feels like a notebook. But underneath, we can take advantage of really cool things and build it together in a way that's useful. Wonderful. Now, your team is working in more of like a, a data engineering kind of mode, or how uh, is that? So, um, so my team is the data platform. We enable um, our data engineers, our data scientists, okay. um, our analysts. So, yeah, so we, we build tools across the spectrum. And on the one end, our data engineers are writing notebooks. Um, they're writing Spark notebooks, right? They'll write in Scala or Python. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, you know, like it's Python and R, right? And, and the, what ties those together is the data. Right, and so they're using the same tools. They're using them for very different purposes, but um, their needs are always the same. Um, this gives us, you know, kind of a spectrum, right, all the way from like producing data to, um, you know, how we use it in the end, which is really interesting. Wonderful. Um, now, uh, what has Netflix been doing in vis-a-vis -vis, uh, open source and Jupyter? Well, th the biggest place that we've been involved with. Um, has been the Interact project. Um, Kyle Kelly, who is part of the um, Jupiter, is the Jupiter committer, part of the Jupiter project, um, has been um, working on Interact for a long time. We yeah, look at fantastic. it. Yeah, Interact is um, an interface. It's you know, like I, I said earlier, protocols. Um, Jupiter or Interact is a set of components that can interact with the notebooks. Um, we we think that's interesting because it looks like you know a notebook interface. It looks like the traditional classic notebook, but it's also something that we can embed in different um, tools. So we've um, we've been investing in that very heavily, and in that project, we've also. Um, um, contributed um, commuter and um, paper mill. Commuter is a way to share and discover notebooks that we use internally, and paper mill is a way to run notebooks, and we use it in the back end of our scheduler. Um, it's an interesting project for us because often we um, open source things in the Netflix OSS um, brand, right. um, but we've been just um, tying that under Interact, um, which has been super useful for oh, us. Interesting. Okay. I mean, there is there's this long history of the Netflix open source, yeah. and especially I remember uh, some of the usage of, say, Cassandra, some of the other cloud kinds of architectures that were coming out early on, and I was super impressed by the dashboards, the attention to detail on, on that level. Yes. So it sounds like some of these traditions have translated into machine learning and usage of, of uh, Jupyter. 
Yeah, you know, I, I don't think I could stress this enough. We could talk for a long time. Um, data is data, right? And um, our expertise has to be in how we use that data and how we use it to drive the company. Um, it shouldn't matter, you know, whether that's operational, whether that's driving our customer service, or um, whether that is, you know, like our long term, like what we um, what we're learning from our data s to make our company better. And so, yeah, those learnings um, sh are reused and um, reapplied just in different um, tools and technology. Excellent. Uh, where do you see Jupiter heading at Netflix? Let's give it some time horizon, but like three years out. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I've been trying to answer that all day. Um, my my view is that um, Jupiter is going to look um, not like a notebook, um, not like a, a single thing that you go to, but just part of um, the platform. That you're going to be working with data, whether that's querying data, whether that's visualizing data, that will end up um, crossing into Jupyter, across its protocols. You'll be running kernel and you'll be running code. Um, but as a user, you might not even be aware of that anymore. Um, that's going to allow us as the platform to really make those people efficient by um, you know piecing things together, right. and it's also going to give them a power to um, you know write notebooks um, in, and introduce um, new things into our tools where they might not be an expert in you know writing websites or things like that, but they might be an expert in visualizing data, and we can integrate that. Um, so I, I think that hopefully in three years um, you won't see Jupiter, you won't see Interact, you'll just see a data platform and it runs underneath, um, underneath Jupiter powers a lot of it. So maybe another way to put it would be, or my take on that would be maybe a kind of self-service architecture for data insights. For data, sure. Data consumption. For sure. Ah, excellent. I'm curious too, um, could you describe a bit more about, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a very large requirement there for UX and, and a deep bench in, in UI. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have design people working directly with the, say, the engineers and the DevOps and that? Um, it's been a, it's been an interesting mix. We have um, over the last year been building up a UX and UI team in the data space in these operational spaces, and it's it's clearly a place that we need to invest more in. Um, I can't tell you today like how how well that or how that's going to look, um, how that bet's going to pay off. But yes, definitely we're going to invest in that area. Fantastic. Thank you, Charles. Great talking to you today. Mm -hmm.